Now let's, let's just read on down here. I gotta slow down. Praise God. Come on. Notice here, verse 5, and they were dwelling of Acts chapter 2. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation of the heaven. Now the when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Now this is what the Jews are talking about. This is how they're talking. Outside of that upper room where the disciples, 120, have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right. And so these Jews are outside of these doors and walls and windows hearing what's going on. And they say, how? They're saying, how? Here we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Yeah. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea and Temple of Lucia, in Pontus and Asia, Persia, Pamphylia, in Egypt and in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers, Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians. Uh, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were doubt, saying one to another, What meaning this other market said? These men are full of new wine. Now, those Jews. The common language in that hour was probably Greek. And these Jews are hearing when these people are talking in tongues as God fills them with His Spirit, they're hearing them speak in 17 different dialects. Yes, right. And they're understanding every word that they're saying. Yes. Amen. Amen. Do ba 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 but the question is asked, and it's a legitimate question. Do you understand always when somebody gets the Holy Ghost what they're saying? 99.9% .9 of the time, you won't understand the word they're saying. But, 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man, but unto God, how be it in the Spirit, he speaketh mysteries. One of the reasons why the devil hates tongues is because he can't understand what they're saying. And a whole different message. You know how to get together to teach us? We speak. We speak. Ain't that our problems? We speak what we have trouble with. And the devil attacks us. That's why we ought to pray in tongues. That's why we ought to talk in tongues. That's why we ought to exercise the Holy Ghost. You can defile the mind of the devil. Oh, let's pray for one now. And I'll bring to you. I, I haven't, I haven't heard it yet myself. But I remember years ago when Brother Williams went to the Philippines mm -hmm. at, the, at the World Conference. And remember that story he come back saying about Brother Chickamarian praying for that Ethiopian woman to get the Holy Ghost. I mean, Filipino woman. Brother Chickamarian is an Ethiopian. He's a powerful man of God. Right. And he was praying for this Filipino woman in the World Conference in the Philippines back in the mid-80s to get the Holy Ghost. And she got it. And he began to have what I term a conviction fit for the good. And they calmed him down. I'm just telling the Brother Williams. He said, when they got a hold of Brother Tickler Mary, he said, man, what's going on? What's happening? He said, I was praying for this woman to get the Holy Ghost. She ain't been outside the Philippines her entire life. And he said when she received the Holy Ghost, she began to speak in my Ethiopian dialect, and I understood every word she was saying. I tell you, it's real. I've had missionaries from Mexico tell me, amen, when those Spanish people get the Holy Ghost, amen, they don't know word of English, but all of a sudden, they begin to say, praise the Lord, praise the Jesus, hear me tonight, it's real. You may not understand all the time, but it can happen. I got two songs. Just hang on. Jesus. Just hang on. So here, these Jews are saying, these men are full of new wine, but Peter, verse 11, verse 14, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said to him, he began to preach to them. Praise God. He said, these are not drunk as you suppose. She is but the third round of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Peter quotes Joel 2, 
28 uh -huh. all the way through 32. Uh -huh. Amen. Right. To these Jews on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. And he told them. He preached to them about David and, and how his sepulchers with us. He preached to them about, amen, Jesus Christ. And I told you last night, amen. Now, when they heard this, verse 37, they were pricked in their heart. Some of you need to get pricked today. Some of you need to get convicted today. That's not where you need to be with God. Amen. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And Senator Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. Verse 38 said, Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise, what promise? The Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Holy Ghost is for everybody. You get the Holy Ghost, you will call it in another language. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just move on. I could go on. This Bible says, with many other words, you can testify to your saying, save yourselves from this untold generation. And they that to receive his word were baptized. And the same day they were added in about 3,000 souls. And the church begins to grow and prosper. We'll follow it in Acts chapter 8. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise We're the Lord. going here a little and there a little. Uh -huh. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at verse 5 of Acts 8. The Bible says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people of one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with pauses and the were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. Uh -huh. Now, no, no pun intended, but joy is a fruit of the Spirit, is it not? That's right. Amen. But, did they have the Holy Ghost? Uh -huh. <laughs> There's another Bible study, but see, the, the superficial joy is different than joy that's down here. That's right. Amen. I can be joyful that I caught a large mouth bass or killed a big buck, but I can still be lost without God. Amen. Yeah. And don't go with that joy's life. Well, let's read all what the Bible has to say. Amen. Amen. They had joy, but did they have the Spirit? Verse 9, but there was a certain man called Simon, which but four times in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because in a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching, that's that word believe again. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, Behold the miracles and the signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they stepped unto them, Peter and John, who, when they come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only to have been baptized in the name of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. They had joy, superficial, happy, giddy joy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. But all right, notice. Then verse 17, I just quoted him. I just quoted 15 and 16, but 17 says, Then they lay their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Say, on. Don't say they talked in tongues. Don't say they didn't mean it. I notice here. Let's read on. Verse 18, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of hand, the apostle saying the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Don't say they talked in tongues. Don't say they didn't. But the Holy Ghost is invisible. So, Simon, how do you know they got the Holy Ghost? Uh, Evidently, he must have heard them speak in yes. tongues. Yes. Amen. I, know. Amen. I don't mind your quietness. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and I'm telling you, it's not that this hadn't been laid by your pastor, but you're hearing it from somebody else today. Right. Right. About the importance 
of knowing the baptism of the Holy Ghost. What he is and what he's not. Let's continue on with the revival in the day of the book of Acts. Amen? The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, we're beginning verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one who feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Sound like a saved man, don't it? He's devout. He fears God. He gives much alms to the people and prays to God always. Then he sees a vision of it in about the ninth hour of day, an angel of God coming into him and saying to him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Thy prayers, verse 4, and thine alms are come up for memorial before God. And now send me to Chuppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Right. Now wait a minute. I'm devout. Uh -huh. I fear God. Right. I give much alms. Right. I pray always. Yeah. I ain't seen an angel. But you're telling me I need somebody to tell me what I still ought to do. That's right. Now hear me. I'm not saying this to be arrogant or smart at it, but it's the truth. When you're going to get saved, friend, when you're going to get real salvation, why didn't the angel say, hey, go get one of the Pharisees. Go get one of the Sadducees. Go get one of the high priests. Amen. No. When you're going to get real salvation, you've got to get a hold of a real man, a real woman of God that's going to tell you what you need to do to be saved. You can't just go to any church and be saved. You can't just hear anybody and be saved. they got to preach the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so Cornelius is obedient. He says, men to Simon's house by the seaside. And while they're in route, God gives Peter a vision. Amen. Amen. About clean beasts and unclean beasts and common beasts. And what happened? Uh -huh. Sheep let down from heaven. Yeah. Full of uncommon things. And the Lord says, arise and eat. And Peter rebukes it. No, not so, Lord. Nothing's uncommon or unclean that's coming to my mouth. My, uh -huh. my body. And God says again, say, hey, what I cleared you, that call not coming. He said, there's some men coming after you, Peter. Don't hesitate to go with them. Yeah, right. That's right. Amen. So, men get there. And they tell him, look, you need to come with us. Blah, 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 blah. You know, praise God. And then he gets there in verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God has no respect to persons. And let me just interject this right here. If he'll give me the Holy Ghost, he'll give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 You know, it was preached to me many years ago before I come to the truth. That you had to get so holy to get the Holy Ghost. So that's why I never tried to get the Holy Ghost. Until y'all told me I could. Listen, I come to find out, you don't get holy to get God. You get God to get holy. Amen. 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 Somebody said, well, preacher, I want you to get better. And then I come to church. I'll never see you. Because you'll never get better outside of the Holy Ghost. You'll never get better outside of God. Amen. You'll only get better when you get God. God's no respect to persons. He'll fill everybody with his spirit. Heal. Heal. You want it. So Peter gets there and he begins to preach about Jesus. He begins to preach the word of God. In verse 44, while Peter yet spit these words, the Holy Ghost fell on that which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as when his came with Peter. That's not about the Jews that begin to follow Peter. Amen. Because that of the Gentiles. Now here's the Gentiles. This is you and me. Thank God he come to the Gentiles. That's right. Because that of the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, the Jews thought they were the only promised people. That's right. That's right. But now because they got stupid and hard-hearted, uh -huh. God says, I'm going to turn to the Gentiles and call me out of people for my name's sake. Amen. 